Hello everybody and welcome to my new uh, podcast. Uh, this particular podcast is going to be about uh, beyond your own strength. Every time you turn it on, it's going to be the one podcast you want to tune into because if you're down, if you're confused, if you're hurt, if you are just not feeling like you should or want to feel, this podcast is where you want to tune into because Satan is telling all kinds of lies to confuse and to batter the hearts and minds of people all over America. Now, what I want you to do is follow along with me in scripture and write this stuff down. You may not be able to get it all. This is gonna be a continual uh, message throughout this whole time that I'm on this podcast. I might be on the podcast in the afternoon. I might be on the podcast in the morning. It just depends. So what you wanna do is like this podcast, subscribe to it, and every time I put one out, I'm going to notify you that I'm live and needed to be listened to. Okay? God bless you. In Joshua chapter 1, the word of the Lord gives us a, a narrative here about a fellow by the name of Moses, the prophet. Moses was a deliverer and a prophet. And Moses had a successor, and his name was Joshua. And Moses reached a point where he, it was time for him to go on and be with the Lord. His time on the earth had expired. He had finished the work that the Lord had called him to do. And so God was now looking to choose the next person. Listen to me really good. The death of things in your life, and I say this with all the sensitivity and sincereness as I can, because I'm not just talking about a loved one. I'm talking about a movement. I'm talking about an era. And I'm tell you something about uh, people in general, we struggle to make the transition. And that's why we get left behind on a lot of things because we don't want to change. Normally people don't like change. And so people try to go against the grain and say, I'm going to stay this way, I'm going to be this way, and nothing is going to change me. Nothing may not change you, but that don't mean things won't change. You would just be left behind. So God turned to Joshua because Joshua was an experienced guy. Joshua was the servant of Moses, and Joshua was there when Moses went on the mountain to get the Ten Commandments. Joshua was his chief officer. And so he was groomed to follow and learn how to follow God. So when Moses went on, Joshua was the likely person to take his place. Which reminds me of something. Who are you following? Who are you following? Or are you just going to church? Or maybe you don't go to church. Maybe you're getting your information off of TikTok. Maybe you're getting your information off of YouTube. Maybe you're just homebound and you've decided to get it all that way. But I'm here to tell you that none of those are the chief primary ways in which the Lord has ordained that you get anything. For instance, he says uh, for a person to preach, they can't preach except they be sent. And he says you can't hear the gospel without a preacher preaching it. And he said that the preaching of the gospel is for those who perish foolishly. So there is a divine mandate for you to listen to a preacher preach the gospel. As well as there is a requirement for you to afterwards get taught the word of God. So you can grow spiritually and mature in the things of the law. No, this is not about you trying to uh, please someone by joining the church. But let's face it, uh, there are groups and clubs and organizations of all kind, and we never find those people at our home. We usually have to go out to where they are. So God calls Joshua, and he says to him something very, very important. And that's why you need somebody to follow. You need a point person out there. But listen to me. If you was ordained to lead yourself, God never would appoint leaders for you to follow. If you can get it done alone, he never would have done so. Now, those of you that don't like what I'm saying, you think I'm wrong and all, write me. Better yet, come and see me. Maybe you and I can sit down and have an intelligent conversation to a much broader audience if they are the kind that believes the way you believe. So come see me. Don't fight me. 
Don't fuss. Just come and bring your Bible and let's have a Bible dialogue, okay? Now, he said to him, my servant is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. So basically what he was telling you, he was saying that Moses cannot finish the journey in order for you to receive your inheritance. So what I need you to do, Joshua, is to take over so that the people that were following can get their inheritance. So that lets me know that persons that you follow are tied to your destiny, or they're supposed to be. They're supposed to be the ones to aid and assist you in your fulfillment. Now, I got a lot of people asking me, and they're probably asking others, what am I supposed to do? What am I born to do? Who am I? Why am I here? Those are all important questions that can be answered and should be answered. And so God made it clear to Joshua what his purpose was going to be, what he was being groomed to be, and ultimately what kind of leader he was going to become. So he said, listen, right away he put a weighty responsibility on his shoulders. <coughs> He's got to walk in the footsteps of the most humble man there is, and that was Moses. He got to walk in the footsteps of the man that knew the ways of God. He said the children of Israel knew God's acts. He said, but Moses knew my ways. They had a really great relationship. And so you want to know this as a fact, that it ain't written there just to make up the page, fill up the pages, and this is not some story that somebody concocted and put in the Bible. It says that the Bible was wrote by men that was moved by the Holy Spirit to write it. And he said it was here for our example. If you want to know how God did things and how God picked out people, chose people, and caused people to follow, then you want to read these old wonderful stories because they're in there for that reason. Are you with me? Now he says, he says, I want you to take this people into their inheritance into the promised land. Now, if you read the story, you'll find out that they had no experience. They had no warfare experience. They had no other persons to rely on. They were in the Sinai Desert. They was in the wilderness. And they're following this one person that got them out of Egypt, and now he's dead. He's gone on to be with the Lord. And here this new guy is taking over. How do we know he knows where to go? How do he, how do we know if he's gonna lead us the way our other leaders led us? Now, some of y'all right now, you're in church right now, you're fighting and you're debating about the leadership in the church. Is it the right person? I gotta spend for you. Maybe your leadership ought to ask you, is you the right person? Maybe you're not in the right place and should be someplace else. See, because last I checked, God called leaders. And he's ordained those leaders to reach people in order to give them the kind of leadership they deserve. But I'm gonna skip on down here because I told you where they were headed. In verse six, he said, be strong and of a good courage for under this people shall I divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. You're just getting an inheritance. You're following a new guy, I understand, but you're getting an inheritance. Why do you need courage? Why do you need courage to receive from God? Wow, you ever thought about that? Well, because a lot of times the adversary has already primed your pump, already told you that you are never making in life, You'll never be satisfied with life. You'll always be discontented. You will never win. You will never make it. Everybody else will, but not you. You'll never complete, you'll never complete an assignment. You'll never completely change. You really are not saved. Maybe you went to church, but you're not saved. See, Satan will do all of these things and more to discourage you. And so God started out with Joshua, who was never a leader. 
And he said the first thing, he said be strong. And he says of a good courage. Be strong. Then he went to the next verse, verse 7. And he said only be strong. And very courageous that you may observe to do according to the law which Moses, my servant, commanded. He said, don't turn from the right nor to the left, that you may prosper wheresoever you go. Now, I'll tell you something. If you're going to really serve God, listen, new church person, new Christian, new believer, and maybe backslide, if you're really going to serve God, there's some things that are going to confront you that is tailor-made just for you that is drawn from the history of your ancestors and bloodline. And what I mean by that, Satan knows exactly what will trip you up, exactly what will trap and snare you, exactly what will cause you to lose faith and fall out of fellowship, exactly what will draw you out of the perfect will of God. Why? He's had a lot of practice with your ancestry. And he's figured out what they'll go for and what they won't go for. And so God telling Joshua, in, in fact, the same thing. So be strong, be very courageous. He said, don't go to the left nor to the right. If you, if you were not in danger of veering off course and going to the left or going to the right, doing something different, God never would have told you, don't do it. He's warning Joshua ahead of time, but that warning is for you and me. Life will throw a lot of curves at you. And it'll pull you one way or the other. And especially if you think that you're smarter than the super angel Lucifer, that you can just outwit him, then you're already trapped. But we need to warn the unruly. We need to tell you that you cannot win apart from God's wisdom, apart from God's understanding, apart from the Holy Spirit. You cannot win. It's not a matter of if you're going to fall, it's just when. I'm here to tell you you don't have to fall. But if you don't have the wisdom of God, that supernatural ability to acquire an understanding about anything you face in order to win it. Did you get that? Just play the message back. You get it. And then meditate on it. Ponder on it. Okay? And so I want you to know that when the adversary tell you what you can't do or what you're not going to do or what you can't do or maybe because he feels like you don't have what it takes I want to tell you here's what God says here's what God says now this, this is this is beyond your own strength there are things in life that Satan has set up that has one purpose to kill, steal, and to destroy but here God says that I've given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. But to get it, you need your sister and you need your kinsman. He said, call wisdom your sister and call understanding your kinsman. This is what he said. This is what the Lord Jesus said. In his right hand is riches and honor and his other is long life. And I might add health. The only way you can survive and not be discouraged and walk and wiped out through discouragement, through disappointment, through setbacks, the only way is to get in the Word, look up what you're going through, see what God did to others who was in the same place you was in, who was going through the same things you was going through, Find it in the Bible and then meditate on it. Meaning, go over it in your heart, in your mind, over and over again. But what you want to look at is how did God handle that with other people? Because whatever he did for them, he's positioned himself to do the same for you. Beyond your own strength, you can't stay saved without the Holy Spirit. You can't stay informed without the word of God. You can't stay connected without fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. You can't just go through life and do what you want, when you want, the way you want. No, you can't. You got, there is a pattern in the Bible that you need to follow. 
So now you pass this information on for me. Send it out, pass it on to your other TikTok friends, pass it on to others that might be looking and might be listening. And if you got any concerns, just email me, text me, call me. If you want to know the truth, this is the truth. You can survive or you can win. To win, you've got to get the winning strategies from the word of God. Joshua never led anybody. Joshua never took the helm. Joshua had no understanding of how to achieve it. And so the Lord took off of the man Moses the mantle and put it on Joshua. I'm here to tell you that God wants to take off for you the mantle of depression, sadism, hopelessness, loss. God wants to take that off. And he wants to put the same mantle on your shoulder so that you can do what he called you to do. I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. God wants your mind to stay on him. He wants to keep you in perfect peace. He wants, to be a, he wants you to be a blessing. Praise the Lord. Now I have five minutes. Give the Lord a praise on you. Thank you. Kim, she give me